Hello and welcome everyone to another puzzle challenge video with chessuniversity.com. This one's actually special because it's our 100th video of this series. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous ones, you can take a look at the playlist on YouTube. Uh, it should just be marked puzzle challenge. You can go back all the way to the first one up to now. And as I say in every video, they scale in difficulty throughout the week. So the one will always be uh, the easiest or on, on the easier side of things. Uh, the first three, so one, two, and three, um, will always be for more beginner players, including this one because it's on the Tuesday. And then it moves into intermediate puzzles for days four and five. And then the last two days of the week are always the sort of more challenging puzzles for more advanced players. Like I said, this one's more still for the beginner crowd under 1000. And it's white to play and mate in two here. So if you haven't solved this one, if you haven't seen the previous video, um, you can of course check that out. But if you just want to solve it, you can pause here and try to solve it for white. All right, uh, assuming people have had a chance to pause and solve, like I said, it's a force checkmate for white, and I'm going to give the solution now. So white plays the move queen takes c6 check. Checks are the most forcing kind of move. Notice that the bishop from e5 cuts the king so it can't move anywhere. There's no way to block. And if you can't move and you can't block, your last option is to take. So that's what black has to do. And now after bishop takes a6, the only uh, check in the position, we have this nice Bowden's mate with the bishops crossing each other and ensnaring the king in this mating net. So, very nice uh, mate and two pattern to be aware of. It happens somewhat frequently, I would say. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a really, really nice one to know. You'll see it in lots of puzzle books and tactics trainers. So, if you haven't seen it before, hopefully uh, you can repeat this, get it into your memory. Because uh, like I said, it's a very fundamental pattern to know. So now with that covered, uh, let's move on to the second puzzle of this week. And the 100th puzzle of the series. Which comes to us from a game one of my students played in an online tournament. It was a, uh, or maybe this wasn't a tournament. Yeah, this was a 30 minute rapid game. So this was, I think, just a casual game my, my student played on the internet. And uh, he was playing with the white pieces on uh, chess.com. And uh, the tactic here is just white to play and win material. Uh, there's two ways to go about that. One is very computery and sort of I mean, it, it makes sense. It all works, of course, because the computer comes up with it. But there's also a very straightforward way that takes two moves to see um, and wins material right away. So that's the one I'm looking for, though if you spit out the computer line, of course, that will also be accepted. Um, so yeah, take time to try to solve this. If you think you get the answer right, uh, you can post on chessuniversity.com on the official post, which I will link in the YouTube video description below. So check that out. If it interests you, you can get reward points credited to your account if you solve it correctly before the solution video goes up tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let's rewind quickly to see how the game got here. This is only going to be the uh, 11th move coming up for white, so we're not too deep into the game. It started out as a symmetrical king's pawn opening, knight f3, and now bishop c5, knight c3, knight c6, which allows a very common trick which I'd show to all my students, because it's just an important tactical theme to be aware of. If you don't already know this, it's already white to play and use a tactic to grab a huge share of the center. Right. Uh, if you want to take some more time to think about it, white has a very nice move here, thematic sacrifice, and knight takes e5. The point being that after knight takes back on e5, white will play the move d4, forking both pieces. Black, uh, if they're aware of what's going on, should try to maintain the bishop, because it's important to keep your bishops on the board, especially as the position opens up, as bishops generally are more valuable pieces, especially when the position is open. So most strong players will retreat the bishop to d6, and then after takes takes, you reach this position, where white has a pawn in the center uh, and good development, good control over d5, and black doesn't have a pawn uh, two squares forward in the center. And uh, usually this position is seen as to be better for white because it's good to have stuff in the center, good to have a good central control. That's one of the three things you should be aiming for in the opening um, as much as you can. So this is a key tactic to be aware of. Now in this game, black probably panicked. Um, and instead of taking back, which is by far the best move, I see a lot of young kids, especially when their opponent takes something like this, not take it because they're afraid. They don't, they don't understand what the move is doing, but they're afraid of what will happen if they take it. They think they're going to get tricked. And while there is a trick, uh, the trick only equalizes material. Like It's not like black is losing anything. And if you don't take this knight, you usually are losing something. You've lost a pawn. So, yeah. I've seen a lot of people here just go like knight f6 as if nothing has happened. And then after trading knights here, white's just up a pawn for nothing. And black's already lost, pretty much. So... Instead, another very common thing you'll see when people panic is they play bishop takes f2. Because the thought process here is, well, I get my pawn back by taking the f2 pawn. I prevent my opponent from castling. That's pretty good. And I'm going to take the knight back anyway. 
So that's the th probably the thought process for most people who play like this. The problem is the king is actually going to find safety relatively quickly, and the um, the real problem is that you, what, black is leaving white with two center pawns, one of which is already planted in the center, the other is going to come to d4. White's just going to have excellent control of the middle and two bishops and very free development of the rest of their pieces, and all of that leads to a white advantage. So knight takes e5, now d4, clearly kicking the knight. Queen h4 check was played in this game. Another very common thing I'll see is uh, queen f6 check. This is also one that uh, a lot of people play. And then you go king g1. And some people will try to be tricky here. Um, like a very uh, very common move is knight e7, hoping for pawn takes knight, which is a horrendous blunder. If you want, you can pause the video now and see how black wins. It's a good pattern to see also. I'll show it. So queen b6. And now all white can do is block the check on the diagonal, and they're going to get mated, because there's no way to actually prevent the check. So you can block, you can block, and then it's mate. So that's one trick to be aware of um, when you tuck your king away on g1, is just make sure that this diagonal can be covered. So don't don't get tricked into taking the knight and getting mated. But after queen f6, king g1, knight e7, of course you don't have to do that. Uh, you can go bishop e3 here. You can make a flight square with h3 or something like this, and then you're threatening the knight. The knight's going to have to move, and you've got almost all your pieces in the game. And uh, just a fantastic position. So, Like I said, that's very common, but queen h4 was chosen in this game, which is another bad move. I mean, black's position is already very bad here, because now after g3, black has the problem that two of their pieces are under attack. And the only way to try to save, uh, or seemingly the only way to try to save them both, is to start by giving a check. The only reasonable check in this position is knight g4, which is what was played in the game. Now after king g2 is just stepping out, black has to address the attack on their queen. They can't just move the queen anywhere. If they go back here, for example, they just hang a knight. So the queen has to stay protecting the knight. It only has one safe square from which it can do that. Um, I guess that's not technically true. There's there's a trick. They, they could play this move, which, which loses a piece in a fancy way, in, as opposed to a straightforward way. And the reason it loses a piece is because the queen on d1 is protected. So white takes back. And they're a piece up. So really the only actual move for the queen is here, which is what was played in the game. Then it was h3, exploiting the pin. Now this knight has to go somewhere safe, uh, preferably somewhere where it protects the queen. <laughs> so it has to go back to f6, otherwise white will just take the knight. And now after trade, trade, we get this position, which you saw at the beginning of the video, where it's white to play and win material. So once again, there's two moves here that lead to winning material. They're pretty much the same, except one is like really hard to see all the way through. It does have a lot of tempo moves, but the other one is very straightforward and takes two moves to see uh, that white is by force winning material. So either of those is accepted, as I mentioned before. I uh, hope you guys can solve it, and uh, I'll see everybody in the next video. Thanks.